Okay, now, um, after more than three decades, the new education policy 2020 has been released with sweeping changes and some path-breaking reforms. Today, we're honored to have with us two distinguished guests to speak about uh, speak more about the policy. First, none other than Dr. Krishnaswamy Kasturi Rangan, architect and chairperson of the drafting committee of the new education policy. In his long and illustrious career, uh, he was the former head of the Indian Space Research Organization. He is currently the Chancellor of Central University of Rajasthan and NIIT University. He is a former member of the Planning Commission, former member of the Rajya Sabha. He is a recipient of three major civilian awards from the Government of India, the Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan, and Padma Vibhushan. Sir, honored to have you join us. Speaking to Dr. Rangan is someone with towering achievements across industry, education, and philanthropy. Mr. Mohandas Pai. Mr. Pai is currently the chairman of Aryan Capital, 314 Capital and Manipal Global Education Services. He was a member of Infosys Board of Directors and held many senior leadership uh, roles over there. He has also helped set up the Akshay Patra Foundation and helped launch over 14 different investment vehicles and institutions uh, that have cumulatively invested in over 250 companies. Uh, Mr. Pai has been awarded the Padma Shri for his nation building efforts and the Karnataka Rajyotsava Award. Warm welcome to both of you and it's wonderful to have you join us. Mr. Pai, I hand it over to you for the next 30 minutes. Thank you very much. Dr. Kasturi Rangan, it's wonderful to talk to you. And uh, first of all, we all of us want to thank you for giving us a wonderful new education policy after 34 years. It is hard to find anybody criticize the policy <laughs> even though some people, some part of the country are trying to nitpick on small points because you seem to have covered everything. And this is indeed a 21st century policy and we're all very happily surprised. It is a policy given to us by a great technocrat, a great thinker and a person who loves his country. Now, Dr. Rangan, my first question to you is, when you studied the Indian education system, particularly school education, what were your findings? What did you find that uh, was existing in India, and what are the challenges? First of all, let me thank you, Mohan, for this opportunity to interact with you. Uh, you are always somebody very unique and special to me. On many occasions, I have sought your help, and of course, you have this tremendous ability to recall numbers, which is a great asset for few individuals, and uh, always that, that makes, that clinches the argument most of the time. <laughs> and that's the interesting part of it. So far as the education is concerned, we did go through the, we, we had interestingly several initial responses to our inquiry of what is the thing that we need to do. We didn't start with the preconceived notion of what the education has to be. So you will be surprised. The order was issued on a particular date. Within an hour, Jay Prakash Narayan from Hyderabad called me, can I come tomorrow to make my oh. And here he was, he spent half a day on the very first day of the order to give the issues of the students with respect to the teachers, with respect to pedagogy, with respect to curriculum, with respect to infrastructure, in respect to the girl students, the inadequacy of trust, uh, financial support for various the needy ones. And then of course, the very fundamental issue of are we teaching the right thing for the right age? That is a fundamental question. And this was a beautiful discourse with Jay Prakash Narayan. So that triggered off the kind of thing that we wanted to look and investigate with respect to education. So it has been a massive challenge for us to deal with the type of responses. There are also, you know, the two types of thing. The private uh, schools look at it. Is there going to be a change in the policy that will affect their interest? That's the question. The other part of it is the public system. Can we strengthen it, which needs a result that we have to make changes in the structure along with the academic component. So this was another kind of a challenge. I think what I want to say is, I think we could finally, that gave us also a flavor of how to look at the problem, how to balance the issues and how to make sure there are no compromises, but how to make sure that this support system uh, can find a, media, a, a approach uh, which will not conflict with the interest of either of them, uh, which will only help them. Because the fundamental question with school education was that it needed a total massive restructure, re, 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 overhauling, if you want to say. 
and that is something nobody could question and the second the most important other part of it is we also introduce quite a bit of scientific logic into this it was not purely abstract uh, information somebody's uh, opinion somebody is saying we did introduce and there were very strong arguments with regard to the scientific inputs for this and that clinched the issue so far as how the policy for the school education we have to configure uh, dr kasuri rangan the important question is what is the underpinning philosophy that guided you in formulating this policies what did you set out to achieve at the end of it because the policy is required for the next 15 20 years policies are not changed overnight it has to last and take india into the 21st century the next 20 years are going to be very different as a scientist you know the rapidity of change that's going to impact the world so what are the underpinning philosophy that so that it lasts for the next 15 20 years you know the, the few things that are extremely important in our country in our society which is uh, multilingual multi multi uh, cultural uh, plural kind of approach to everything is that each the, the different segments have different uh, approaches to education and how do we want to how, how they would like to see india's education policy shape it be interesting to know that we had in you know, discussions with uh, a group of uh, christian missionaries of to how they look at it two very intense meeting you know 15 16 muslim organizations who came together and they had their own view of how to deal with education here was uh, a saint vidyasagar of the jains they are five, five you know they are, they are a five crore people in this country they have a large investment in education and they revere this man and uh, he was he is a kind of a digambara who continuously is a shifting location so wandering muni so to say and he was camping away from raipur in uh, this thing uh, he said that he would like to have a discussion with me and that too personally now i took the flight to raipur went there and drove through rickety roads and reached the place where he was it was not a great place but you had certain then there were a lot of his followers there and spend three fourth of a day with him his simple his approach to life and therefore of education should be extremely simple value based things that you should you should be clean you should wash your the thing these kind of he gave a precepts in a sense of what it should be so then there were uh, there is a tibetan who came and shared his thing a buddhist uh, thing then there were six so okay. and then of course a large number of bodies in the hindu part of it so you know this this gave us an idea of that we should not cut short any process of thinking which may which may have an effect on any one of this so that was one of the thing the philosophy we decided is this multiple sources of input then of course there are other segments of the society i don't want to overlook the fact that there were industrialists fiki cia all the, they were all there i am giving this kind of a people because these are the ones that can really make difference into their opinion and they have a large followers and they have their own aspirations so we went in. so that is the point that i would like to say that there's, there's a, then of course the third or fourth considerations are not philosophical but imperatives the ones that i would like to say is one is that uh, india has a mm, population 50% is about 30 years or uh, below 30 years this is one and the next 10 years for them this is a stake is an aspiration you have a technology which is changing artificial intelligence experts you know these are all a part and parcel of today thing and if education does not have a focus on this kind of a thing obviously we are going to lose out that is another kind of a thing then you look at the kind of international things that we have committed ourselves the sister the body makers sustainable development goals sd4 and the kind of the lifelong ed- ed- education and quality education for everyone so those kind of these are they are simple to state but extremely difficult in terms of translating into actions so we had to have a policy so this is the other side of the framework that we had to put down so these kind of approaches which involved multiple elements or agents of the society uh, multiple institutions multiple organizations with interest in education and individuals who are given their life for education we didn't want to leave them out the philosophy was take their inputs convert it into a philosophy and then integrate it and then create a framework for this 
that's how we do. that's wonderful that's wonderful it's been a very large democratic exercise where you listen to all shades of opinion taken the best from everybody and distilled it into one single report no doctor i want to that... say uh, in this uh, in the two years we had a minister who appointed us he he always checked how we are progressing but never once did he say why don't you look into this aspect because he oh, really you have full autonomy is full freedom remarkable remarkable i should say these are things that really gladdens my heart and also i have hope in the system that's wonderful that's wonderful that means that uh, you had uh, full freedom to come out with the report no restrictions on your thinking and you assimilated all these thoughts and came out with this wonderful report thank you now dr kasri rangan when the education for new education policy is implemented a child who has gone through 12 years of the policy imperatives when they finish 12 years of school because we'll confine ourselves to school education what do you think the child should be what kind of per- person the child should be at the age of uh, let us say 18 uh, because i think this is important you are trying to create to use a crude word a finished product a product that comes out of school what is that finished product what do you expect the child to have what are the qualities of heart and mind that the child should have that should come out from what your suggestions are in the policy great thoughtful question typical of you mohan i only want to say uh, you know to first and i had always work backwards you know being also a scientist i don't just look at the outcome and then forget about what really led to that outcome so i have to give a little time uh, to the fact that if you have to create an outcome where the child has a meaningful role in the society he or she is employable he is or she knows the system that is called india the complex system and he is able to take views even though not very incisive and very high level but he has an understanding of the issues of the and also subscribe to the basic ethos and principles of this country you need a certain way of re- acquiring it to acquire this you have to start making investments right from the day the child is born it is not as simple as saying that we can get something at the end of the school uh, without bothering about what happened to the child so how do you do this is that is where the story starts you create the first three years at home you have a home language there is a mother tongue and all that kind of a thing the the family takes a lot of interest in the child in even the traditional way like play things and other things which are so unique to every state these are all there the child is grown with a lot of care affection and at the same time responsive to the environment which is what the cognitive science demands then the next two five years the child doesn't grow every child doesn't grow in the same way there is a non linearity in the case of the child's growth so we need to make sure that every child is given its attention and find out its strengths and weaknesses and correct it this will because 83% of the brain is complete development by the age of 8 so if you don't take advantage of that growth pattern and also not every child grows in the same way in which the other child grows so this creates a non an unstructured educational requirement so the foundational phase is one where you call as an unstructured phase because every child has to be dealt for its own strengths and weaknesses so this is the second part of it so once you do that part of it you start getting into a second phase where you try to start understanding some basic principles some ideas some communication but across the subjects not necessarily that they can it can be compa concentrate on one subject or other subject but in the overall context of it, that is the middle that is the primary school then you go to the kind of a, a middle school where you can now structure yourself into subjects so that subject learning comes into picture by the middle school and then finally in the secondary school this all these uh, years of 5 plus 3 plus 3 11 comes into the aid of uh, making the child understand things able to make judgments be creative be original and all other faculties which gives the virtue for the child to earn the uh, to learn the world to understand the world and to even pick up expertise in skills or occasional thing which are useful at that particular stage so it is a build up of a child in the 15 years plus a, a, a direction to the home that the first 3 years 
there will be provisions. As far as policy, we have said there will have to be a provision to make sure that even the three years we need to be looking after that child properly by the parents and the necessary institutional mechanism we need to bring. So that is the story of a child's growth. So it is a very interesting way to look at it. It goes from a perceptual capability to a conceptual capability. Uh, to a prescriptive capability and ultimately an abstract things he can learn. So in four stages, the child grows, we take advantage of that growth pattern and try to give it that gift that it can make judgments on its own, it can learn on its own, it can use books, it can deal with others. And this is the kind of a thing at, at a level which is consistent with what is demanded out of it. And it also becomes employable because the elements of vocational education we bring in at the the this, uh, at the at the, uh, the three year next uh, second three year period and also in the final secondary uh, school period so you have a job possibility also after all you go to a village and uh, in fact prime minister beautifully put it that we need to adopt a bagless few days of bagless days the youngsters should go and visit the local institutions try to learn out of uh, factories hospitals other kinds of things, learn gardening and many carpentry and electric. so these are all embedded into the policy with respect to the last four years. So this, in a sense, makes the true child what it should be as a future Indian. That's wonderful. I think this is very well thought out. But tell me a very personal question. You are a man of great accomplishment. You read the heights of Indian science, headed ISRO, did so many things. Chandrayan, you know, you were responsible for that. From the education that you got as a child. What is different in what you are suggested? Because well, we want more Kasturi Rangans. We want more people like you. But you are I an exception not, to the generation. <laughs> I, I want to tell you one thing is there. Uh, you know, we, we, we were brought up in a school. Uh, I was in Kerala for five years. I was much of my school education was in Mumbai. And Mumbai is a kind of a society which if you get exposed, you become more adventurous, more... Uh, bold and things and law and things of like that. And also it has got a multi multi uh, cultural society. And uh, then I went to Ahmedabad but to Vikram Sarabhai for my PhD. The important aspect is the school period was very limited in terms of the, the, the type of thing we are seeing, the no rote learning. 50% should be devoted to arts, crafts and many other kinds of things. Freedom for child to learn what it wants. And don't unnecessarily load the child with subjects in a directed way, which is, which is of no interest for the child. So allow it to choose among a variety of subjects. And to facilitate it, we have even given a school complex as a model to realize all that kind of thing. In some element, this was prevalent in our times. I mean, oh. We were, we, were, we were taught not very large. Our, our subject matters were limited, number one. Second thing is most of the questions, the teachers used to ask us questions and try to evaluate whether we have understood the principle or not. Oh. This is the second part of it. Every Saturday before I go home, in terms of half a day is a school day, uh, they bring some books, which is all on Greek legends, Indian myths and everything. And they ask me children to break it up and bring it on Sunday, Monday morning. The whole idea, they are not going to ask questions. You read it for your sake. So this is another kind of a thing. And then I having born in, and moving in Martinga area, you know this in <laughs> Bangalore, Bombay, uh, I used to visit the footpath books store. Oh. And I used to buy four, it was four and a half in those <laughs> for, a, for a book. And several books I used to buy over 15, we get it one way, one, 15 days to one month vacation. I should, I should read 100 books. That is a kind 100 of books. All kinds of books. They, they may be also 30 pages and 40 pages. Those I'm not talking about 200 books pages. But you, you read, whether it is history, whether it is geography, whether it is a legend, whether it is myth, uh, whether it is the question of a Roman Empire, type and all by Tacitus. I read Tacitus' uh, book on the annals of Roman Empire in those years. So oh. you know, this gave a kind of what you today call as a liberal education <laughs> in the, from the street. <laughs> a liberal education the street. on the street <laughs> was the kind of a thing. So, you know, the free freedom that you enjoyed at the family level, no, try to load you. School teaches you limited things, gives you the freedom to read more Think. things. And then you also create, inspire yourself in reading all the kinds of things. It could be whether the knowledge comes out of a public library or from the street, it doesn't matter. He changes the personality. First of all, he changes your English. First of all, he changes your thinking. He changes the variety of ways in which various civilizations have grown. 
I think having left the, that phase, he still was stepping in the mind. Oh. I think when you become chairman of ISRO, sometimes from that, uh, what you call as a RAM, random access memory, <laughs> or some other thing is drawn. So this is a very interesting way in which uh, I think my growth and evolution has been. There is no trajectory of this kind laid out for everybody. It just happens. And it just happened. So I think that is all I can summarize with respect to this. Of course, the, when you go from go to space, you learn a lot of things in space. And it, the space is not science and technology alone. Applications are there. Social elements are there. Economic aspects are there. Strategic aspects are there. Foreign collaboration is there. So once you become a chairman of space, uh, you have to be aware at least to, up to a good point about these elements. And then you become in the Rajya Sabha, you give a little more because what you try to do is to refine your thoughts to make sure that people listen to you. Because oh. space, I can say, and people listen because I am chairman. In Rajya Sabha, if you say wrong things, you will be rebuked. So you are always nervous what you say and what you don't say. So that sharpened my method of analyzing things before I can talk a word about it in Rajya Sabha. Um, the, uh, the planning commission gave uh, the mother of all kind of a thing, if you ask me, uh, an experience of India, experience of planning of India, and couple it with economics, and then try to look at how do you sharpen specific areas in a holistic manner. That was something, uh, because you don't have any institution which can do that kind of a thing. So that was the third element. And finally, when this for, uh, challenge was thrown to us, the one of making the national education policy, all I can say is, it proved to be much more complex than all the earlier experiences. <laughs> and so I, I conclude by saying NEP gave me a, an experience which is a mother of all complex All experiences. Yeah. Dr. Nangan, my, my last question before we go on to Q&A. You know, uh, India is a very diverse country. There are rich, middle class, lower middle class, poor. There are tribal areas, backward areas, so-called backward areas, big cities like Mumbai, Bangalore, etc. There are private schools, public schools, all kinds of schools. Now, all this is required in diversity. How does your policy, the policy recommendation, ensure that no child is left behind, that every child gets good education, there's equal access to all, and there is good quality in everything because nobody has been able to solve this problem in the last 70 years because we are a country with about maybe 200 to 28 crore children in school, and we produce two and a half crore babies a year. So, do you have any savings on this? <laughs> it's the last I think we, we have actually the, the, the very first uh, thing that we have done on the early childhood care and education, where is where the largest dropouts occur. And uh, a good part of the largest dropout, not only that is the only reason, is the fact that the child is not able to bear the load of ignorance. It is, not, it is being pumped with mathematics, so many subjects but is not able to understand it. Because as I told you, the brain growth, there's a mismatch between the brain growth and the way we educate the youngster. So that is the part which we want to correct it with respect to the childhood education, early childhood and the foundational phase. All that we are trying to make sure is this foundational phase uh, education, which should be, should be one of the first priorities in the education now in this country. Okay. We need to bring ECC. If you don't do ECC properly, and also a program which is attaining the foundational literacy and numeracy, which is one of the other aspects of it. By 2025 is the time we have put for this. I think there's a national mission they are going to form for this. And this is for foundational literacy and then correspondingly change the pedagogy. As I said, it is five plus three plus three. I think this is one of the thing that has to be brought into picture. And particularly, I want to say, that there is no escape from ECC being now introduced as early as possible, the early phase of the school education for the child, education and child care. Uh, that is one. The second, the second, of course, is the fact that we have now tried to discuss a little bit about areas which are, you know, mostly it is a question of equitable, inclusive education. We talk of on one side, and there are these socioeconomically disadvantaged groups. I can come up to that much later if you want. But the gender identity is an issue where the, the even uh, females as well as transgender are separated out in, and they are disadvantaged. Socio-cultural indices, even CST all said and done, 
or obc or minorities this other part of it then there are this geographical and problem problems with some of the villages have got very poor in terms of the economy and then disabilities is another kind of a thing then socio economic condition migrant labor and things like that there are the questions of education how do you so the policy has made separate strategy as policy for each for each one of them this is the most important thing questions can there are the issues recommendations could range from scholarship financial support hostels right teachers the ability to have that right for example disparity means uh, disabled fellow means you need to have even devices man do you to aid them and then they climb ramps and things like that so to and we can discuss with the entire group in this country which is representing the disparity it's been half a day with them so that can, so to give you an idea of that how seriously we have gone in i think in each one of them we have talked to the representative and we have also one member who was a member of the vice chancellor of the tribal oh. university you know indira gandhi national open you know, tribal university uh, uh, mr katima professor katimani uh, he knows in and out of the tribal education and what is denying them what do we want to help them and what do we want to we don't want to pester them also because he, uh, under the name of high education you try to pester their culture that also is not a right thing so he gave us a very valuable input on those kind of a thing so on the whole we have addressed this question in a holistic manner all the socio economically disadvantaged groups have been addressed specific uh, suggestions have come out of all this and we have included it as a policy uh, keeping in mind uh, the various special requirements including the creation of the right type of teachers and attitude in the society that's wonderful i think that's fantastic santosh we are running out of time any questions for dr rangan i wish you had more time because it's getting exciting we <laughs> still need half an hour but you're cutting us out I any agree. questions uh, i think uh, uh, there are a couple of themes i think but one uh, theme that is definitely coming out is in terms of implementation and the challenges is there a transition plan in place i think if we can just address that yes. as one theme uh, that would be great okay doctor uh, yeah thanks uh, you know uh, i i didn't want too much of emphasis on implementation at the time when we formulated the policy there are two reasons for it and this stems from my experience in space <laughs> you know if uh, if if you try to say uh, four years before chandrayaan uh, eight years before chandrayaan was was four years i cleared the chandrayaan planning and getting public op- opinion it was a huge task in terms of uh, getting the public opinion i mean here of course it was 100 times more but chandrayaan also demanded that public visibility acceptability in the country that we going to spend money on a planetary mission and the questions of the value of that money for other purposes so this is the kind of a thing so uh, this is something on which uh, we have a uh, we have we have taken enough uh, care I, i think the specific question um, uh, um, implementation yeah so the, spe- the specific question is how do you implement we need first of all if you go from the implementation point of view and then look at the present benchmark for implementation i could have given a sort of a, a, a report within a month and mm. not done anything with it the, the idea was not to create a policy uh, be, because it will be implemented and these are the reasons we have never had program the, the strength for me at least and many of them have their own way of looking at it the strength comes on the fact that we have many times started programs in this country not because we look at the implementation capability but we work for the implementation of this ah. as a distinct from implementation this policy needs a tremendous resolve at the level of nation at the level of individuals at the level of the educational systems and at the level of people who are interested in education people like you uh, to further strengthen and expand this area and finally a political way so what is interesting is on one side we have created a document making sure that it is certainly the one that is needed for this country this what is needed for the country and what can be implemented for the country uh, i can analyze separately and give you the results but uh, I, i what i consider is what is impl- needed for the country is most important otherwise you're going to lease lease out and right now you see the prime minister is starting atmanibar and getting several things initiated 
Why is it that this could not have been done? He said, because we could not do this. We can do it, but we have not done it. That's, that's yeah. the point. So those are the kind of loopholes we want to plug here. And on the other side, I'm happy to say, because in the recent, very last week, the PM has come repeatedly to emphasize that this policy will be done. Oh, brilliant. So, but, and he said, we own the policy. That oh, is that's the most important people. thing. And no stone will be un left unturned. To put a, to do to carry on this policy. So between the two, there is a whole host of things to be done. The implementation to me is a tough job, but it tries to be done. It's a plans of you know, and but the implement the, the all the policy for a, uh, number policy in, uh, what what do you call it? paras? If you really look at it, they are all well within our means to do. Oh, yeah. As a scientist, I can see that. There is nothing there that cannot be done. But you need a culture to do it. You need a resolve. You need as a nation that we need to take it forward because otherwise we should have that fatalistic view. Uh, education failure is going to be a failure of the nation. That fatalistic view, everybody should have to work on this. I, I see that sign right now. And if we can somehow sustain it and build on it, I think like that. And people like Mohan, who have the ability to convey this very much more forcefully than what I can, I think can play a role in this. Uh, I don't want to be, I'm not in quantitative per purpose. No? We have got 6% GDP, all I can reel out. But I think they are to me less important than the fact that there is a resolve in this country, cultural change if necessary, we will bring in individuals and collective systems will support it. And there is every, the people, everyone should think that he or she has got a role in this. Whether he is directly nominated by the government that he's officer on special duty or he is a special teacher, or nothing, nothing of that kind. I, I have no follow standing today in the uh, anywhere, but I'm willing to do anything within my energy. That that is the whole thing. So I think the, I have no doubt it can be done. There is there could be certainly some Cassandras of dooms, exactly like uh, Sarabai faced uh, when he wanted to start uh, this thing. But uh, he said that we have to leapfrog. The, you, you use the word leapfrog. And now we are going to have a leapfrog in education from the state of a lower level education to a state of a 21st century education. And that leapfrogging is a must. And whatever energy you want to impart for that leapfrogging, I think it is our task to do. Thank you, Dr. Rangan. That's wonderful. And over to the organizers. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you so much, uh, Mr. Pai and Dr. Rangan. Absolute honor to have you here. I'll quickly hand it over to my colleague and friend Sriram for the next segment. Thank you so much.